Oh, no, I had a disagreement with the bacon rolls. Where's everyone else? This is not something out of a horror film. Uh, Why, what's all this? This is the highest point in for five years. You know what, when I think of it, I'm feeling a bit sniffy myself. Maybe I'll just... Don't you dare. I'm relying on you two today. I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but would you mind working through lunch? I will get sandwiches in. I just don't see how we're going to get through everyone otherwise. What if we skip lunch altogether? We'll be lucky if we get through everyone. There's Melody and I. I'm sure we'll be fine. We are professionals after all. No, I couldn't really call in sick, not when we go into print. You know, I'm the only one who knows how to do the layout, so... Yeah, yeah. Is he in yet? Oh, no! Oh. Where's all the other typing monkeys? Uh, they um, they've got hay fever. Did I ask you? Editorial meeting. Five minutes. Oh. All right, Mrs. Elgood. Plenty of rest and fluids, and you'll be back together again in no time. You're welcome. Everything OK? Yeah, um, totally under control. Absolutely fine, thank you very much. Right, who's next? It was the perfect front page. Alfie, the missing horse, had all the key ingredients. Intrigue, human interest, a heartbreaking story about a defenceless animal in jeopardy. I milked that story dry, I'm telling you. I almost moved myself. And a stupid nag only goes and turns up. Don't smile, that's not good news. Alfie ending up as glue is good news. Alfie going the way of Shergar is good news. We can't lead with horse doesn't go missing, can we? We have precisely four and a half hours before this week's edition goes to the printers and this is our front page. So you motley bunch of amateurs don't have to conjure something out of thin air. Go on, hit me. What have you got? Well, come on. Come on, steroid abuse at Lethbridge Golf Club, match fixing at the Bowling Green, wife swapping at the WI. Anything? Anyone? Yeah, I could. You're a bleeding typesetter. God, we may be up the creek, Lord save us, but we still got a few planks of wood left to paddle with. A front page by three thirty, and it better be good, cause no one is gonna make Les Robson look like a fool. Out. And your mother's happy to be left overnight, is she, Norman? Oh, well, as all systems go. What time shall I expect the Normobile? 1,400 hours. Well, I'd best get packed then. Over and out. Did you hear that, Roswell? Did you hear that? You and me are going on the trip of it. Oh, a lifetime. It's all right, all right, all right. Don't panic. Don't panic. It's all right. I just have to get my breath, that's all. What are you doing? Nothing. Is that what I pay you to do, is it? Nothing? Yes. No. Uh, no, no, I'm just doing... Um... Get me a doctor. Are you all right? Not for me, Squeaky. I'm in mint condition for our medical page. Oh, what about Dr Barry? Where have you been? Dr Barry is a fantasist who bought his PhD online. That's why he was so cheap. But head office said next time we run and think there's not 100% kosher, he'll have my head. So I want you to find me someone who has sworn the hypocritic oath and get them to fill half a page of human suffering by this time yesterday. I think you mean... Now, typesetter, I want to see you dialing. It is possible that the hay fever may have aggravated your asthma. Have you been under any stress lately? No more than usual. Uh, well, my boss, Les, he's quite... Direct. You mean he's a bully? No, 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 no. He's just he's, he he could be a bit intimidating. Right. Well, if it's affecting your health, then you should complain or well, get another job. Well, it's not that easy. Journalism jobs are impossible to find, and at least this is a foot in the door. Oh, you're a journalist. No, it's my dream to write for a paper like the Birmingham Times or something. I used to fax some stuff that I'd written every week, but. They never got back to me, and then, and then I got this job, and I thought Les would let me write something eventually. But right, so what brought on today's attack? 
Well, to be honest, Dr. Bell, I'm not just here because of my asthma. Come in. Water. All right, Doc. How you doing? Terrific, is it, guys? I've never felt better. Ah, oh, fit as a fiddle, right as rain. I'm glad to hear it. Take a seat. Oh, I'm just here for my weekly checkup. That's all. It's nothing to worry about. Okay. So it would just be answering a few medical queries, uh, basically what Dr. Barry used to do, except that you're a real doctor. Well, almost. I'm GP registrar. Wouldn't you be better off with someone, you know, more experienced? No, not at all. You're perfect. I, mean, I think the readers would really respect your opinion. Well, I suppose it'd be a chance to show them what I can do. So, can I tell Les that's a yes? Why not? Fantastic. Oh, so we'll need your copy in by three. What, three, three o'clock today? Well, as in two and a half hours' time? Well, I'm really sorry, but we're completely snowed under. It's just me and Dr. West, and we've got to get through all these patients. I just... I'm really sorry. I don't think I'm going to have time. All right. Look, I'll try. Just let me have a look at the reader's letters. Ah, uh, uh, now, well, that's the other thing. Walter, you had major heart surgery three weeks ago. It's going to be an intensely restful time, Doctor. And it's somewhere I've dreamt of visiting for, well, light years. What me more? And Norman's fully qualified as a first aider and he's got a certificate in his van. Listen, I appreciate the fact that you're thinking of taking a break for once. Exactly, Doc. Now you've got it. And I admit it's preferable to your usual nocturnal adventures. But... Well, you have to hunt at night, Doc. That's the only time you're going to see him. But this has nothing to do with that. This is something... It's a little bit like scenic recreation. Walter, I'm sorry, but as your GP, it's out of the question. Oh. I thought you'd understand. Hey. Let's see how your heart's doing, yeah? And then we can make an informed decision. My colleague's got the ECG. I'll be back in a minute. I can't just make the letters up. It's not very ethical, is it? Please. It's just for today. It's a bit of an emergency, and Les would really appreciate it. And what about you? I'd really appreciate it too. No, I mean, what about you and Les? When are you going to ask him to let you write an article? I couldn't do that. Why not? I just couldn't. He's too busy and he, he doesn't listen, so... All right, Amanda, that is enough. I know what it's like to have a boss who doesn't appreciate what you've got to offer and you just have to make him realise his mistake. Show him what you can do. All right, I will be your agony aunt. On the condition that you ask Les to give you a chance. So, have we got a deal? Good. And the worst thing about it is I can't really do anything for Hayley. Well, what would you do if you had it? <sighs> well, if I'd exhausted all of the possibilities, I would head on down to St Phil's for a pollenex shop. A what? It's a highly effective anti-hay fever injection. You can only get it at the hospital's allergy clinic, and unfortunately, no one seems to know much about it. Hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for your help, Dr. Bell. Um, deadline's three o'clock, remember? Ooh. Good luck with Les. Okay. What? What do you want, typesetter? You found me a new quack yet? Mm-hmm. I don't see him anywhere. She's just writing her copy. Ah, bird, eh? And? Anything else? I... Go on, spit it out, girl. Well, I wanted to ask you something, Les. No time for chit-chat now, typesetter. Walter, it's Dr West. Look, I really do need to talk to you, so if you could call the surgery as soon as possible, I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Mm. 
dear Melody. No. Oh. Oh. Dear Dr. Bell. Hmm. Right. Um, can you help me? I have the following symptoms. Um. Oh. Julie, I'm slipping out for 15 minutes. I know I said I'd work through lunch, but the patient of mine's gone missing. Don't worry about it. Well, is it necessary? I mean, look at this place. <sighs> Melody, you don't mind holding the fort in your own behalf now, do you? No, no, I can handle it. They're all here for the same reason. There's nothing we can do for them except dull out antihistamines. All the same, Nick. Don't worry about it, Julia. I'll be fine. I'll be right back, promise. Les! Bleed in that type set. He nearly gave us a heart attack. I'm sorry, but I think you're a bit rude to me just now. And my name's not Typesetter, it's Amanda Pryor. What? All I was asking for was just five seconds of your time. Five seconds, eh? You should have said. On your mask, get set, go. Well, I've been working here for nearly two and a half years. Four? Four and a half. No, I mean, two and a half years. Three. And I'm not just a typesetter. I mean, I write every night as well, and it's my two. dream to write for the Birmingham Times one day. Dingling, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Riveting stuff, typesetter. All I'm asking for is an opportunity, that's all. I mean, you need a front page and I need something to write. I've already finished the layout. Can you just give me a chance? Les, just let me write something. Oh, that'd be Norman. He's early. Oh! Walter, let me in. Sorry, didn't want to let Roswell out. Hey, Roswell. Scenic recreation, eh, Walter? See, it's fine when the patient's there. I can listen to their chest, I can take their temperature. You know, it's easy to make a diagnosis when the patient's actually in front of me. I'm sure this is a good idea, Melody, and you haven't bitten off more than you can chew. No, no, I've got it all under control. It's just difficult making up patients that don't even exist. Well, don't. Don't what? Make up patients that don't exist. What right about what you know, isn't that what they say? That's it. Oh, thank you, Julia. Hmm. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to get back to my patient. You give yourself indigestion. Excuse me. I'm Amanda Pryor from the Leatherbridge News, and I'd like to talk to somebody in your allergy clinic, please. Three sightings in one month, Dr. West. Three in Bodmin. Do you realise how significant that is? And me and Norm could be the ones that capture it on high definition. Walter, you're in no fit state to go to the news agents, let alone Bodmin more. I'm going to recommend you see your heart surgeon at some pills oh, as soon as no possible. Need to do all of that. A team of doctors work very hard to fix your heart. The least you can do is show them the courtesy of looking after it. If I promise, there's going to be no bobbing more, and there's going to be no chasing aliens. Actually, we uh, we prefer to use the term alternative life forms. You're staying here, Walter. Do you understand me? Message received loud and clear. Mission abandoned. So I've just spoken to the specialist allergy clinic at St Phil's. And uh, yeah, they say the injection's out there, but it's just a case of raising awareness. Yeah, so do you think you'd be happy to back the campaign? That's great. Thank you very much, Councillor. Bye. I know, Roswell. I'm as disappointed as you are. It's Norman I feel sorry for. He doesn't get out much as it is. What with his skin condition. Another time, eh, boy? Who is it now? Oh! Oh, you're a week early. 
と。I'm just about to start typing up a story. Are you indeed? Yeah, got all my research. Tick tock typesetter, 20 minutes left. But you said 3.30. Well, it goes to the printers at 3.30, and it'll take you half an hour to set it out. You can count, can't you? But... I'd give you an opportunity. Now, don't screw it up. We're all depending on you, Amanda. <laughs> and where's my blinking medical page? Go, 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 go. Well, that was a long 15 minutes. Sorry I'm late. You know how it is when you have to persuade a heart patient not to go hunting for extraterrestrials. Yeah, at least you're back now. Maybe with the two of you here, we stand a chance of clearing this backlog before Christmas. Every time a patient leaves, three more take their place. Where are you going? Uh, well, our email's down. Oh, yeah, I know. The, the IT guy said he'd be back up in about an hour. Well, we go to print in 45 minutes. Look, I've got this patient who really needs me. I can't let her down. I'll be as quick as I can, I promise. Oh, to print. You know, that poor girl has been tying herself in knots all day trying to impress you. Feast your eyes on this, Roswell. The Beetlejuice RX 800. Can you believe it's ours? Think of the possibilities. I can't believe it. I can see Norman's house from here. He's loading up the Normobile. Going ahead without us. What a difference this would have made in Bodmin. This bad boy. It would have been magnificent. It would have been like a spy hole in the galaxy. No, it's me. I've changed my mind. I'm coming with you. I knew how to do it, but then I realised I just had to think about the symptoms that I saw every day, and I've done these help sorry, sheets. Sorry, Dr Bell, I'm just a little bit busy at the moment. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, you're writing. Fantastic. Well, don't let me disturb you. I'll just hand this straight to your editor, Les. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, I can't wait to meet him. Oh, he sounds like a nightmare. Still, be quite easy to find him, though. Can't be that many half-man, half-rhinos in Leatherbridge. <laughs> no, just the one. You the new quack? Uh, yeah, Dr Bell. My office. What the hell's this? Well, I thought you could either call it Melody's Maladies or Give Me a Bell, because my name's Melody Bell, so... Rheumatoid arthritis, hemorrhoids, eczema? Yeah, um, they're all inspired by genuine case studies of people who regularly visit my practice. I couldn't give two farts if it's posh who has the arthritis and Bex has the eczema. I wouldn't use this to wrap scampi in. But Amanda said... Don't listen to her. What does she know about journalism? It's like asking an ambulance for medical advice. Mr... Les, being a doctor is about helping people, you know, real people. It's not about entertainment, so I don't know what you're expecting. Something sexy, something dirty. Dear doctor, I like dressing up as a bird. Dear doctor, I'm having trouble getting me temp pole up, that sort of thing. Oh, right, right. Well, you know, if it's that sort of thing that you're after, then um, you better look elsewhere, because I quit. You can't. Why not? Because I'm firing you. I can't believe I've done it. My own front page. How did it go with Les? Uh, I don't think I'm destined to become the next dear Deirdre. So much for showing them what I was capable of. Time's up, typesetter. What have you got for me? Go on, thrill me with your journalistic genius. <laughs> Hay fever injection offers hope to thousands. Hay fever? Are you yanking my chain? You expect me to put this on my front page? Hay fever? Could you use the paper to raise awareness for... Raise awareness? What do you think this is? The Wall Street News! Uh, but I wouldn't... Have... Yes, do you know what? I'm quite certain that one day that you will write a front page. The day the little green men appear above Lethbridge in flying, flipping saucers. This is the first time in its history that the Lethbridge News has got no front cover. I can't believe it's happened. What are we going to do? Fortunately, someone round here 
is a flaming professional. Local residents protest parking fines. Les Robson reports. Now there is a front page. When did you write this? A couple of days ago. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to see you work shy doing something for a change, as if I was going to wait 15 minutes before the print deadline with no front cover. I am Les P. Robson. <laughs> and we all know what the P stands for, don't we? That's right. Flaming professional. You, you can't let him treat you like this. Come on. Come on. Mr. Robson, I know that you are the editor of this paper and that you choose what gets printed and what doesn't. You're damn right I do. And I'm sure that's really stressful, but that gives you no right to treat your staff with such contempt. Your behaviour has been completely unreasonable since the day I arrived here. You're nothing but a big bully. And your spelling is atrocious. And don't get me started on your punctuation, because it, apostrophe S, is not possessive. Thank you for your honesty. I'm going to take a little time now to reflect on your comments. OK, I've reflected. You're fired. Send that to the printers, then sling your hook. Everybody can wait here while Her Majesty finishes laying this out. No one makes a fool out of Les Robson. I'm off ski. I think I'm getting a bit of a throat. I prescribe five shandies to be taken orally. I think that's everything, Roswell. Unless you can think of anything that I've forgotten. Scope, uh, my cameras, my thermals. Cool. Hang on. Oh, it's just, I can't catch my breath. That's. Oh. 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 <laughs> you know, this is really good. You're a really talented writer. Yeah, well, I'm never going to get printed now, am I? So. You're not going to let Rhino Man beat you. Come on. I'm not leaving here until you've switched that computer off. No, I've got to finish this. Why? Because it's my job. Or it's my job. <sighs> Can I use your fax machine? Yes, there. You know what's funny? You are probably the most powerful person in this office. How on earth do you get that? Well, Les may decide what goes in the paper, but you're the one who puts it there. Did you get your scoop? Sorry? Will you be pursuing a new career in journalism? Oh, do you know what? I've come to the conclusion that I don't care about impressing people. I just want to help them. And where's the satisfaction in helping patients that you can't even see? Well, your patient, Amanda Pryor, called to say that she thinks you are the best doctor she's ever had. And whatever it was that you gave her made her feel better almost straight away. And you made a pretty good dent in the patient's here before you left. So all in all, a successful day. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't think I've got everything right. Well, us doctors really do. Oh, oh, finally. A doctor's surgery with two doctors in it. Right, see you. Good evening, Leatherbridge News. <laughs> yeah, this is Amanda speaking. Birmingham Times. Uh, no, I didn't fax you any articles. Oh, no, um, it must have been my colleague. Are you serious? Uh, well, yeah, any time you like, I could come in now if you like. Well, no, 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 Monday's fine. Uh, hang on, let me just check my diary. Thanks again for coming, Doctor. I thought I'd better check you hadn't done another run. <laughs> no chance. Take me a night to get these wires off. Yeah, it can be a bit frustrating when you want to get back on your feet. Takes a bit of patience, Doc, that's all. I can't argue. Anyway, Norman said that uh, we could do this Bodmin expedition in January, if I'm up to it. I'm not sure. Need to travel that far. 
The truth's out there, Walter. The truth's out there. I suppose you could help a damsel in distress. Are you the damsel? Yes. I hope you've got a head for heights. Why? Oh, OK, just trying to relax. Oh. Leo, uh, Lenny, hand here, please. <laughs> Dr Fenton, how lovely to see you. Be careful. A team of amateur cooks from Belfast take on the professional chefs next. It's Step Up to the Plate on BBC One Sculpted. And later at 5.15, contestants face a good grilling from Anne Robinson in The Weakest Link. <laughs>